Bujujayak, Nijnaga, as Padawatami for hello, everyone. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. So, I am uh, director of the Newark Earthworks Center, uh, and as director, I'm really excited about uh, a forthcoming nomination of the Newark Earthworks Center, along with seven other complexes in Ohio State, the state of Ohio, for World Heritage UNESCO designation. These designations reflect uh, sites that uh, are characteristics of human genius and creativity. And so, the Newark Earthworks and the other sites in Ohio, these monuments of the Ohio River Valley, deserve to be recognized along with places such as the Taj Mahal, the Colosseum, the Pyramids, Angkor Wat, Machu Picchu. And so it's really exciting. But I think that it's important for a native perspective on these sites, and that's what I'm going to offer today. And I'll start with a prayer. My prayer is pretty simple. I pray that what I share today means something to someone somewhere. Aho. So, first of all, I should explain what the Newark Hopewell Earthworks are. Newark Earthworks, and they are a complex over by Newark, Ohio. I'm from the Newark Earthworks Center, so I think about, dream about, work about the Earthworks Center all the time. There are two primary uh, parts of the complex that remain. First, the Great Circle, and I'll ask you to remember these two, two sites because I'll talk about them later. The Great Circle, and the Great Circle, I'm sorry, the Octagon and the Great Circle. So, they were built by Hopewell-era people 2,000 years ago. They are a series of mounds and earthen embankments and squares, octagons, and circles that cover originally probably almost seven square miles. The octagon and the great circle are what primarily remain. The rest of Newark, Ohio was built on uh, the other parts, but we still have the octagon and the great circle. I think it's important, you know, I grew up in an Indian community. I'm an elder of that community. And I think it's important as we think about this site, not just in itself, but as a world Heritage UNESCO historic site that we have a native perspective, which I hope to offer today. And how I do that is I'm embedded in the social and ceremonial life of my community. I've traveled throughout Indian country in my career, and I connect the dots. We don't have written words from the Hopewell era people. We don't have documents. We don't have eyewitness testimony, of course, but we can connect the dots from what Indian people are doing today and make reasonable assumption, assumptions about what they might have done in the past. And these are my speculations, and these are my perspectives. So, during the course of my teaching for the last 10 years at Ohio State University, I have students that commonly ask questions, very good questions. And so I've organized the rest of the talk around those questions. The first one invariably is, why did they use dirt? Stone would have been much more impressive. And I explained to them, 
we could have used stone. We knew how to work stone, but earth, not dirt, earth, we think of it as earth, Nok Muskegonan, Mother Earth, was the most sacred material that we could have used. And so it was entirely appropriate that all of these monuments in the Newark Earthworks are made of Earth, Grandmother Earth. There's also another question that comes up is, they would be more impressive if they were bigger. Well, that is a bit misleading because they're not built vertically, they're built horizontally. The octagon has a nine course golf course on it, a private country club that I'll talk about more later. The uh, great circle in the early 20th century had an amusement park within it. It held the convention of 7,000 Civil War veterans within it. So these are enormous. The octagon, if it was tipped on its side, would be taller than the Giza Pyramid. But we wanted to hug and embrace the earth. Students ask, how could people build such isolated, isolated people build such things? Well, that's a stereotype. Hopewell era people were not isolated. They traveled across the continent. And we know from the artifacts that we see that they traveled north, south, east, and west. And the artifacts reflect that. But what were they used for? Well, as I explained to my dean at the Newark campus, after they spent $20 million on a STEM building, I explained, we already had a STEM building, the octagon. It embraces science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It is an incredible construction. What were they used for? Uh, ceremony and ritual, undoubtedly. But also other things, a part of life. Naming ceremonies, perhaps funerals, schools and universities, transmission of knowledge, marketplaces. They may have even been used as sports fields, stickball and lacrosse, much like we have multi-uses for the big places that we build today, including the Mershon Auditorium, right? Why were they built here? We don't know. But their building, they themselves are not sacred. It's the site they were built on that is sacred. That site was sacred, is sacred, and will always be sacred. What's so important about the Great Circle? Well, besides its, its enormity, it's a circle that reflects the f numbers four and seven, sacred numbers in the Indian world the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, and also the below, the above, and the present, where we stand. And so it reflects the journey through life that we make, an ever-ending cycle of life. What's the big deal about the octagon? The octagon traces through its embankments the moonrise, the lunar moonrise, goes along the eastern horizon in an 18-year, 219-day movement north and south. Most peoples around the world never, never noticed that, never conceived that, never celebrated that. We did. And that's really genius, and that's really creative. Why were they concerned about it? Perhaps a calendar, but I think more importantly, they wanted to confirm the stability of the universe. They wanted to confirm that things were being in balance and in harmony, that their ceremonies were working, that their lives were being uh, conducted in a good way. Mano Bamadzawin. So, the last question students ask me is, why is there a golf course on the octagon? Mound Builders Country Club. It's a private golf course, and that's a long story. The land is owned by the state of Ohio. 
The land is owned by all of us. It's been leased by the golf course for about 100 years. And to their credit, they have maintained it so that there aren't houses and buildings built upon it. But you wouldn't have a golf course at the Acropolis. You wouldn't have a golf course at Taj Mahal. You wouldn't have a golf course at Stonehenge. And so it's time for the Mound Builders Country Club to move. They only allow us access. You own the land, but we only have access four times a year. It's time to change that. It's time to open up the golf course, the country club, the octagon to everyone. And this is not just a native issue. This is an issue for everyone, for all of us. Thank you very much.